Get ready. ready. Cause it's about time for you to speak your mind. Super Secret Girls Club. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. Good morning. How's everyone Wednesday? How is everybody's short week? I hope all of you are having a short week. Um, yes. Yes. Hopefully. Fingers crossed for you guys. Fingers we crossed. We do. Yes. <laughs> we made it happen. <laughs> we made it happen. Obviously. One of the pros of owning a business. <laughs> Speaking of which, that's what we're talking about today. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about it. Um, pros and cons all balance each other's out obviously <laughs> like a lot of shit that we had to do before we had to make this happen but we'll all yes. talk about that one and we'll wait for people to join but while they're happening Kenny, you want something before coming here do you want to express your <gasps> thoughts yes how what what you watched what we reacted to and yes how it went so this morning uh, at 8 30 we watched the finale of andor and I feel like I'm still high from yeah. just the excitement and adrenaline and just like everything. Ooh. And I just love that show so much. People have been saying a lot of things about Endor. So is, yeah. is this something that people can watch who haven't seen Star Wars? I think so. Okay. Have you seen Rogue One? Yes, I have. Yeah. So it's basically like the characters from Rogue One. Okay. It's, it's kind of like... So in Rogue One, in the end, yeah, they yeah. all die. Yeah. But you see kind of like what sparks like them to turn into like to bec become be there becoming rebel rebels and gotcha. just becoming like activists and like kind of like what they go through before that happens oh cool okay so good so you're excited so about that one yes. it was a long episode like it was like an hour and a half almost yes. or an hour yeah um it was really long <laughs> but it, it didn't feel like it yeah like when it ha when it ended we were like but like so many unanswered questions still come on like how are you ending like this well that means there's gonna be season two yeah, and then there's also like a post-credit scene. Oh, okay. um, after you know credits roll, and that was just crushing. Oh no! Like we found out something. So there was there's they end up in prison at some point, and they're building something. Yeah. And then in the end, like they're just building like small parts, and in the end, you find out in the post-credit what they were building, uh, and it's just like, oh my god, what the fuck? That's <laughs> insane. Well, anybody, if it's, you're listening to it. Hopefully, there's no spoilers. Reactions but... today. Yeah, so it will be out today, right? Yes. Yeah, awesome. I can't believe you're almost done. That's the way you don't have to like rush through Endor to SSJC. Yes. And hopefully, we can get a yes. creative day back. The last 12 <laughs> weeks have been rough for me because I would be here early, watch the show, and then like had no breaks and run directly here with my notes. <laughs> and it's just like, all right, She's prepped. do it. She's <laughs> prepped. I love it. All right. Um... Do you have any plans for this Thanksgiving? Um, yes and no. Um, so it, Thanksgiving is not something that our parents ever celebrated. Um, when we were kids, my brother will always get invitation from his friends, so they will he will like go eat yeah. Thanksgiving food for his friends. But um, I think once we all started move like moved away, mm -hmm. we started cooking ourselves. Like our parents won't cook, so it'll be me, my brother, and sister will cook Thanksgiving meal. So that's exactly what we're gonna do tomorrow. Yay. Um, we're gonna do sauna in the morning. Um, just to get a break before we have to deal with our parents. I mean, it's not that <laughs> horrible compared to other families, um, but then we'll have a whole day cooking. And I think that's usually what the fun part is for us, just because my brother lives in LA, so he's in town. My sister doesn't live home. I don't live home. So three of us like in the kitchen and not actually, we don't kill each other. Is, so is, that's your, really is your mom not going to freak out that you are in the kitchen and like, ruining everything <laughs> no no thanksgiving is the one part where mom like she tried to come in and yeah. try to help last year she tried to help she was like i'll clean up and kb was making brussels sprouts yeah and you know how brussels sprouts you have like leaves and he put the leaves on the side because he was like oh it's so crispy and she threw it away i know she thought it was like a trash <laughs> so kb was so pissed and we were like mom no, just you can't <laughs> clean. So just go sit down Aww. because she can't sit still. She was like, "I'll just clean." I know. Like, you guys I, are I cooking. Get it. I get it. Um, and it's like, yeah, no, mom. Nick. That's hilarious. Yeah. So ever since then, we'll just we'll just like, okay, mom, like here, cut this. Like if you really need to, like do this. That's uh, fun. I but... love that little tradition that for once you're cooking for your parents. <laughs> exactly. And dad gets so excited because he's like, you know, dad loves to eat. So he's like, oh, I'm gonna get Indian food, like American food to eat, and that's nice. not Indian. Nice. Um, he gets excited about American food Aww. way too much. 
Um, Cute. Yeah. So it, it's going to be fun. And I think mom is always excited that she doesn't have to cook and we mm-hmm. can cook, which it's, I think, opposite in a lot of households, right? Like mom is the one who always cooking big mm-hmm. meals and we don't usually do it. So it's our way to do it. And I think we've been getting better and better, like using fresh ingredients to cook instead of like canned food. Mm-hmm. So it's, I don't know. I have a whole list. I have a list of like how, what to start making when mm-hmm. so that we perfected for the last two years and this year is going to be perfection your parents are vegetarian right no 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 oh, we'll okay. eat anything so you have turkey yeah or, okay yeah we won't have turkey practice making chicken rotisserie chicken yeah oh. yeah we usually i mean we don't give a shit about turkey we like love the sides yeah we have all the sides Same. the meat changes like sometimes we have ham sometimes i have a chicken and mm-hmm. i don't really care what protein i have i'm gonna fill my plate up with sides yeah like that's all i'm the same way i i yeah. have like my my like Thanksgiving plate is just like twelve tiny gulps of exactly. something, yeah, and then like a little bit of like meat on the side, like same size as the rest. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it will just be enough to put on a roll and put other stuff, and that's it. That roll size meat, yeah. like I don't need anything more than that. So yeah, I usually will take it because it's like just one of the things, but I won't um, crazy over meat. For some reason, we haven't had anyone say anything in the chat, and I think that's suspicious. Hmm. So, let me see, let me see can if I can check? check on the Twitch. Yeah, if people are here, it looks like it. Looks like fourteen people are watching us. All Where right. are you, fourteen people? Fourteen of you guys, just 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 say that you're here, because <laughs> we so don't we want know. to just talk to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that we are ready to get started. Yeah, let's get topic. started. Yeah, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Like Kitty said earlier, we are going to talk about pros and cons of owning a business. Yes. Um, we have this for seven years. Oh, Hi. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Okay, no, be safe. Be safe. Thank no, you be guys safe. for being here. I just want to make sure that it's working. So, exactly. Go, go. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Cool. So, like, Kitty, let's get us started. Yes. What made you think of this topic? And yeah. Um. So we decided to start uh, like, you know, a series. Uh, within SSGC of just uh, introducing our jobs to you guys a little bit more and like and, and from a different perspective. So yeah. typically you just see the reactions or the skits or podcasts, like the things on camera. There's a lot that happens behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, and owning a business as, as a concept <laughs> is <laughs> a part of like a huge part of it. Yeah. So we're going to talk about it today. Last time we talked about what it means to be an influencer for us, um, which I hope that you found interesting. And uh, there will be more. So every other week, right? I think so. We will be doing one of these, covering different aspects of our job. Uh, We will try to invite other guests so they can give you their perspective on things. And uh, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy this and find it useful. I'm super excited about this topic. Oh my God. What? I, I... Sorry, Pavi says that I spoiled the end of Rogue One. If you haven't seen it by now, it's kind of on you. <laughs> it was a year ago uh, that it came there. out. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yay. Um, I'm so excited about this topic. Um, like, <laughs> because business is what I do. Um, I have, like, master in business. I do business. <laughs> I do business. I have, like, master in business. So I love this topic. Um, like, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are not not excited about, like, background, backend topic things to do operations and stuff paperwork Mm -hmm. i love it i love paperwork yes so (laughs) navi is going to be a useful resource in this podcast uh let's just start by talking about what you need to start to get started i guess before we say what you need to get started i think the one question we need to discuss is why you may need to start a business um starting a business can be informal or formal way like you don't have to have an llc to start a business you can just start a business saying like me and kenny just started something to doing it like and we're gonna call it a business um and that's a very informal way to do it when you will need to create an llc um llc is a one way to officially open a business and you will just need to do that when you want to put a liability away from yourself um if you are creating a revenue or have some products or services that you're creating and you, there might be a liability or somebody may sue you for something. You may want to create LLC so the liability goes to LLC and not to you directly. Um, that's when you will start a business. And what was your question? Sorry. I don't even know. 
<laughs> what you need to start a business. Yeah. Um, so like the the kind of like the starting, in, I would say, investment. Yes. Because and and by that I don't just mean money, because I think that for us when we were starting the normies. Our investment was mostly our time. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that is a precious commodity, even more so than money for some, because it's time is precious. Yes. And uh, it does take a lot of time mm -hmm. to get your business started. Mm -hmm. You may be trying to start your business with the motivation of, I will have more freedom, like time-wise, I can make my own schedule. And yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, down the line, you will work less and less if, you know, you have more enough... Fun. Uh, resources to hire help but um until then it's gonna cost a lot of your time yeah so and i think that's one big thing to like when you say what you need to start a business yeah your time put value to that time mm -hmm. um because that is going to be the most expensive thing that you'll put into your business um, knowing that it may pan out or may not pan out exactly um, if it doesn't pan out that's a lost cost that money is not coming back and you don't have to, I think something we should come back to a lost cost eventually too. Um, but yeah, that kind of investment, it might also be a money. Um, like Kenny said, when we started, it was our time. And if you needed something, you know, like some props or whatever, we will buy ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't really have funds, but we'll, we invest into our equity per se, mm -hmm. not something that we kept track of it, but something that we knew that we needed to do. Um, but not everybody, everybody may can start what they have and just start with the time or you may need investment um, depending on what kind of business you're starting. And I will give another example, like we're starting a sauna social business. Um, that one we needed funding, like we actually bought a bus, had to transform it, right? Like it was a different thing with mm -hmm. YouTube search and actually had equipment. So we didn't have to buy an equipment search already had the equipment that we were able to use it, obviously once we used it <laughs> to death we had to buy yeah. a new equipment and if you look at our like very 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 old mm -hmm. videos you'll see that we just have like zoom in the middle of the table yeah and it's like catching all sounds of the room everything compared to like you know now we have roads that are you know directional towards like you know our faces and the camp and the, and the reaction we have different set like of microphones this. This is a different microphone. Yeah. We have different cameras for different occasions or like for different purposes. We had camera we where are... it was like every 12 minutes, right? Like yes. it would cut off every oh 12 God. minutes. You have to pick up and like yes. press start every Our 12 minutes. Our beginning reactions and one of the reasons why there are no uncuts <laughs> is because we had this camera that would only roll continuously for 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. So every time someone had to get up, like press play again. And that was the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially, <laughs> like, if you don't have funding, which usually a lot of people don't, um, use whatever you can find. Um, even if like your phone, phone is the best way. Like, if you have a phone to film something, sometimes phone quality is way better than mm -hmm. what you'll find on a lot of things, and you can get free apps to edit something on yes. your phone. So whatever free you can find, whatever equipment you have, um, just use that. You don't need a new equipment. And mm -hmm. I think that's the one thing that a lot of people forget, like when they start business, like, oh, I need investment to get new equipment. No, no. just start. Start with what you have. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Shout out to iPhone. Um, <laughs> shout out to your phone. <laughs> shout out to your, this, just your smartphone. <laughs> um, there's so many apps out there, so many ways to like, I think TikTok is an ex amazing example. Um, like TikTok mm -hmm. itself has so much ed editing features included. Mm -hmm. um, that I get amazed every time I film something I have to edit. It. it was like, I didn't realize TikTok had all this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just like start with what you have. Um, scrounge up, ask your friends, um, get secondhand equipment. Honestly, mm -hmm. you don't have to get new equipment, get secondhand. We bought a lot of secondhand equipment, yeah. a lot, until we were able to afford. Um, I remember first time we made a camera purchase. Um, it was eight of us. We all had to get an agreement and then like, okay, I think we can buy this. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, we can buy this. <laughs> Took forever, but like we bought it. It was like, all right. And we felt so guilty. It was like, should we spend this money on this equipment? We already have this camera. I was like, no, we need to. Mm -hmm. Because Surge needs his camera for his own personal use. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's essentially it. And you, it may not be funding, but if you need funding, yeah. just. Mm -hmm. And I think know. that sometimes people will use like not having money uh, as like a bit of a cop out. Yeah. To not pursue their dream. Like mm -hmm. it's something that you're really passionate about, but 
and and that's not the case every single time i'm not mm-hmm. trying to be like you know blanket statementing here and judging people but i personally would do that you know where yeah. i'm just like i want to do this i want to do that but oh my god i don't have money to buy <laughs> what i need for that so i guess i'm not gonna do it you know what i mean yeah i i used to do that so i'm just more or less calling myself out yeah so yeah that sometimes you don't need money yeah. to get started in, in 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 any capacity and then money will come out eventually yeah and again it really depends on like if you're just doing a filming content um so obviously for us that applies but if you are gonna like start a business of you know owning a space you may need a rent for it yeah. um then yes. you just sublease it. There is a ways yeah. to go about it. Um, there are always government funding as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's things on that. But you you will have to figure out what your business is. Mm-hmm. What it is that you want to do. Um, and yeah, you should definitely have... Um, if, if that is the case, you need funding and you don't have money yourself, the best way to go about it, in my personal opinion and experience, is to just have a pitch. Mm-hmm and find those like community centers where they have like the um there's this one lady that i talked to she's a lawyer but she's also like a business consultant Mm -hmm. and she has like her pro bono hours at one of the community centers and you can go talk to her and she will she like pinpointed me to like so many different resources and Mm -hmm. she's like you can go there present your case you can go there present your case like these people just got like government funding yeah. so they they like kind of need to get rid of it like yeah, they yeah, will yeah. be able to like give you some money Help support you. you so there is options um oh. locally that you should definitely especially if like your business is like selling something to like your community then definitely use the community resource mm-hmm. there's so many community resources for sure there's federal funding too yeah. there's just like so many things you can apply for and obviously private loans too but be careful with those <laughs> <laughs> yes be careful with a private loan yeah um yeah I'll, and I'll, obviously yeah. obviously that is the the last investment part investment part of that is kind of linked to you know the that kind of insecurity and just like putting yourself in a situation where you're maybe in debt mm-hmm. it's very stressful and the fact that you don't know if you know your your business idea is going to be successful or not is just that added stress that yeah. is also part of your investment you're kind of sacrificing your well-being <laughs> for a while to that's true to make your dream come true and maybe for the rest of your life to be smooth as i don't know bambi's ass <laughs> <laughs> bambi's ass all right cool nice yeah so let's talk about some of the well we kind of talk some of the uh advice of like what you need to set up you said LLC, but not necessarily. So, yeah, um, I guess the question that I've gotten a few times, um, normies are LLC um, and why you will need to set up LLC. Um, a, if you need to file a taxes, it's good to have an LLC. Um, B, why? Just <laughs> so let's say um, many ways. Um <laughs> Uh, so if you have a business and you're making a revenue from it, um, if you are only person who's making revenue for it, you can put that income in your in your personal income mm-hmm. as a sole proprietor. Yes. Um, I will say that is the best way to go about it. Um, however, if you are providing services, let's say you are renting out a house, um, you may want to create LLC just because let's say the renters sue you you for something then you want to have an llc where they're suing the llc and your personal assets are untouched Um, because if you don't have the llc that barrier and they sue you then they can go after everything you own Mm -hmm. so llc is that barrier llc is usually for the liability Um, for us llc worked because there's not a one person it's seven of us Mm -hmm. um, for us to kind of show um, how the income is being given out um, and how the loss is being divided out. That way it's easier for us to show it on our income. Yeah. Um, if you don't have to create an LLC, you don't have to because the LLC includes um, you signing up with the Secretary of State. Every, for every, every state has a different process where you set up with Secretary of State and then you file a um, business entity report every annually. Um, there's a fee for it. It's not a huge fee, but it is like 30 to 50 bucks depending on which state you live in. You don't need to do that necessarily yeah. all the time. Um, Some types of like businesses don't re- 
that there's like very minimal risk that mm -hmm. you don't have to like you have to do me it. and Chris uh, like we don't have an LLC for our OnlyFans mm -mm. page. It's just sole proprietor type of thing. Exactly. Um, and the other thing I will say like it, there are a few things also like if you're a sole proprietor, um, also talking to your CPA because sometimes mm -hmm. when income is go to as a uh, self-employed it gets taxed higher yep. than as an employee. <laughs> so let's say you have an LLC, right? Mm -hmm. The money is going through to you through an LLC as an employee, mm -hmm. you will pay income tax on it. Yeah. But if it's going straight to you as a self-employed, then you get self-employed tax, which can be above 20 to 30%. Um, again, don't quote me on this percentage just because it depends on a state. Yeah. Um, also your income bracket. But if you're doing an income tax, that's less than 20%. Um, so it goes from that way. But then if you have, um, if you're self-employed, then you can claim a lot of deduction. Yes, you can claim a lot of deduction as a self-employed. You can show a lot of expenses as self-employed. Um, That's what we do. Yeah. And <laughs> also sometimes you'll, you can, the one thing I've learned talking to our CPAs or just different CPA, you will tell your CPA, like, I would like to save money. And then they will just give you a high level. They will never tell you exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. So you kind of just have to, they were like, oh, just make less money. Like, cool. I don't want to make, <laughs> make less, less money. money. I want to make more money. Uh, but what they are really saying is to show more expenses. Um, don't show fake expenses, but just be mindful of like, okay, if I'm working from home, I can deduct my rent. I can deduct mm -hmm. my utilities mm -hmm. um, for us. Like if you're on a camera, we can deduct our clothing, our like whatever we put like ourselves. I don't think anybody does it, but that's an option to do so. Um, I do it. Do you do it? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I need to do that for this year. <laughs> I haven't done it. Um, I think I heard about it last year and I completely forgot about uh, that. I definitely do it. Yeah. So whatever <laughs> deduction you can, like look up online and see what other deductions you can put it in it because there's a huge list of deductions. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some states where I can um, deduct my pet. Um, I can't do it in Indiana, but I mean, I should be able to. They're dependent on me. Like I am huh. paying for them. Um, so there should be a deduction because that should incentivize people to have pets, right? Like you can, they yeah. are dependent on you. You yeah. are technically taking care of them. Well, hopefully that won't inspire wrong kind of people to get pets. That's true too. There's always pros and cons yeah. on that one. Uh, but yeah, uh, do the deductions as many as you can. If you bought a car, put it in your, put it as a, under a business, claim it under a business. Um, but yeah. Again, LLC is not a mandatory. If you're starting a business, doesn't mean you have to create an LLC. Um, mm -hmm. Just it depends on what your resources are, what you're doing. And mm -hmm. if you don't have to create one, don't yeah. do it. Because that just comes with extra paperwork that you may not need to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, hate business entity reports. Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. I think that the first thing you do is just, like you said, on doing something that you are passionate about and mm -hmm. do that for a while. See if there's interest. Mm -hmm. But then eventually you will have to do the boring stuff, yeah. like setting up an LLC if you feel like you need to. Um, and there's other things uh, that might be good for you to do. Uh, just like set the groundwork so that once you know your business picks up, it's kind of like smoother for you to transition into like actually running a business and not just like having a hobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? yeah. So do you have some more advice outside of LLC? Um, the one thing um, Eli asked, like, is there any free resources for business classes? YouTube. It's a great true. resource true. for business classes. Like, if there are great people on there, like, for investment, I will shout out Stephen Gramps. He's great for investment. Um, and he will just tell you, like, what to do and how to do about it. Um, he's great. Khan Academy is another great resource for business. That's Khan Academy. It's not on YouTube. I don't know if it's on YouTube, but Khan Academy is a free resource. Mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of business classes on there. Um, and just be mindful. I think a lot of older business resources, I will say, are kind of outdated mm -hmm. from what we are now. Mm -hmm. um, so just be careful of what the time is that was posted. Um, like, that doesn't mean that they don't apply now, but the times have changed. Uh, there's more resources right now. Like there's YouTube as well. Like there's so many free resources available. So if somebody tells you like for accounting, you need QuickBooks, you don't need QuickBooks. <laughs> there is very free resources out there that you can use. So mm -hmm. go for free resource before you start paying for any subscription. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't you don't honestly? I I we don't pay for accounting software. Um, I don't pay for accounting software, so there are free resources out there. So mm-hmm. if there's any that says like you start paying for the subscription, don't. Unless you know you have Netflix, then you have to pay for it. <laughs> or borrow um, your friends. Yeah, I would say an example for us specifically with that is Airtable. Mm-hmm. We Love Airtable. use Airtable. So since I when when I started working for the normies as you know kind of like an admin person, I was looking for something that's just not spreadsheets because mm-hmm. it, it's just you know, something a little more intuitive or more like easy to look at. I love spreadsheets. Um, I know, I'm a spreadsheet person, <laughs> but I need something like more like I can filter it. Like it's it's done for me. Yeah, I don't need more to. Automation. I don't need to. Yes. So um, I was looking for different tools. Settled, you know, after like deliberation, I settled for this one. It's called Airtable. It's great. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially, all of our reaction like deadlines, all of like our editor assignments. All of our like promotions and sponsorships, everything, and shout outs, everything is there for every single video, and um, it's super easy to track. It was very difficult to set it up, but mm-hmm. now, like, and it took a lot of time, but now it's just like automation, and it's just it's just there. It's a resource that we've built, and it's like literally like one of the fucking pillars of of our business and it's free it's free you can pay for it if you want to and then you get so much more features and i wish that we could but it's a little yeah it's, a little, it's <laughs> very expensive but the free versions of like different products and resources are great already so good yeah. that we with our you know output are using it and it's still within like a free domain so mm-hmm. it's yeah. great that's a great segue to tracking things. Mm-hmm. You do want to make sure you track things. And I think that goes with like financial tracking. Um, you want to track your financials day one. Don't wait till the end of the year to prep for your taxes. Mm-hmm. It's daunting task. Even if it's like a two items, like this month we only spend uh, things on two things. That's fine. Track it. Because you, your future self will love you. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to make sure my future self is taken care of <laughs> and not cursing on my past self because I've done that many times. Um, you want to track those things. Um, any kind of like, I Airtable is great. Um, I love spreadsheets. I will always have special place in my heart for spreadsheets. But spreadsheets only offer you so much. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to... For now, using spreadsheets, like we used, I used spreadsheets to track our financials in the very beginning because it's so low. It was like one or two items. Um, and then we started doing more and it needed a little bit more automation for things to be, con- and now we use Wave. Wave is W-A-V-E app. Um, it's a free tool that I use and it connects with your bank account, your credit cards, and then it pulls into it. So it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, I use that for my personal as well. Um, and I, it's free account i don't have to pay for anything Mm -hmm. um i haven't even seen an option to pay for anything i'm pretty sure there is for Mm -hmm. more but i for what i need to do it's amazing Mm -hmm. um i I love it i use mint mint and i love it like m-i or m-y m-i-n-t okay and um it's it's connected to it goes into intuit software yeah and so it kind of like um connects all of your accounts into one place yeah so literally like you know my checking my savings my other accounts like my mortgage yeah my car loan like everything so it's like the you know the, the positive values and the negative values mm-hmm. all together yeah um it sends me a notification when i need to pay a bill it tracks Ooh. like it tells me if i have like a subscription i haven't used oh it's i love it yeah, yeah. and like and in, in, in the end it like you know, tells you like it sends like a statement at the end of the month, and it tells you like this is how much you spend, this is how much you made, this is where you can cut costs. Hmm. That's great. That's I great. might need to look into that as well. Um, that's really good. Yeah, like that's using good it for, for personal. personal too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, like using a personal. Like I like once I started doing it for normies, I was like, shit, I need to look into my personal account. Yeah. And then I, I'm pretty. I don't know if Mint does it. Like Wave does it. Like it will learn how you categorizing it. Like I have like mm-hmm. twenty different ways to categorize items. I go very in-depth, you don't have to, but that way it helps me 
um, it, it learns it, it categorizes mm-hmm. itself, and then I can tell, like, okay, how much I spent on meals or how much I spent on this, and it's really good. Yeah. Um, um, I, I like, started, I, I got mint, like, three months ago, maybe. Okay. So it's still new for me, but... Um, it's working, sounds it's, like. It's, it's great. I yeah. love it. And, That's good. Um, I love, and I can also like kind of like uh, uh, label mm-hmm. each purchase, each yeah, like transaction yeah. by like whether it's for business and then like which business. Oh, nice. And then like um, if it's personal, then it's like separate. But then I can pull just the business expenses and then I can obviously use them for I need taxes. to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I need to do that too because sometimes I will like charge something on my card, which is technically a business that I need to pull aside and then yeah. I have to go one by one. Yeah. Ah, I it's just I, I have a hard time getting into the habit of like doing it regularly, you know, and then it's always like, oh, I have to go through five pages of transactions now. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And something you missed something. And yeah. I was like, what? And then, and then also I'm like, wait, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This many times happened. It's like, is this a fraud or was it me? <laughs> <I know. laughs> Which one was it? Yeah. Um, yeah um, tracking your financials i think that's the one thing like personal financials uh for sure it just helps setting up your own budget mm-hmm. um like i hate having a budget but it kind of helps me see what i'm spending where and mm-hmm. what i need to be mindful of yeah. um like will i stop spending money on things that i don't need to no but it will help me understand how much i'm spending and <laughs> maybe a month or two i can skip it and then next month i can spend on it but, mm-hmm. yeah yeah um and i would say one more piece of advice and I personally need to get good at that as well, is having like, have a place, one place, yeah. one, just one, not multiple, where you put down like your, your ideas, your voice memos or your oh, note yeah. memos about like ideas that you just have, but you can't work on right away. Because those are great ideas. And if you don't write them down, or if you don't like record it somewhere, you will forget about them. Maybe eventually they'll come back, but then you're wasting time. And I do this all the fucking time. I have a great idea. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I, fuck, I'll forget that. <laughs> then an hour later, I'm like, what the fuck was that? That's funny. <laughs> I do that, but I don't have a one place. I have like 10, 20 places. See, so I can never find it. That's that, And that's my problem. Because like sometimes I will write it down, actually. Yeah. But then I have like 50 notes in different programs. Like in keep, different notes, places. Keeps. Yeah. I have like a, a Word document. Then oh, I God. have like my voice memos. And it's overwhelming. It's better if you just choose one and stick with it. Yeah, same. Eli. My note app is a jumble oh, make a mess awful. as well. It's I, awful. I have like five different lists of groceries. It's like one. Same. It just needs to be one. Same. And then like five different things for like TikTok ideas. It's like it just needs to be one yeah. note. And it's just metal me going back. So yeah, it. we had the same problem with uh, our sauna bus business. Oh yeah. Where we have like six different word documents saying and the like same thing. so many keep notes that i like i just decided i'm just gonna create a new air table base i'm gonna put all this shit in there and it's gonna be there yeah that's no, funny <laughs> i remember i was like i created a to-do list and then i got a notification that you created a to-do list and then we and had then a third screen yeah and i was like <laughs> we just need one to-do list <laughs> because it's like a full one item um <sighs> that's i think the organization it's a big, yes. big, big thing. Like, and that yeah. goes with the, uh, I'll leave today's problems for tomorrow. <laughs> like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, i done that and my future self hates me for that. Mm-hmm. And then I will curse it. It's like, past self, you could have just done this and be done by now. Also, Pavi's Pavi says, my motto is future may not be, not even exist, so live in the now. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> oh, God. We can go yeah. that sad path for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but- yeah. And then one more thing that you, should definitely do um and not discount is marketing yeah definitely make sure that whatever you have to offer is something that stands out from your competition know your competition and uh kind of study them and make sure that um you learn from them because they obviously you know if, if you study them they're probably successful there's a lot to learn from them you can also reach out and collaborate there's so many different things you can do um to market yourself and uh, that will help you. Yeah. So I think all of this ties really good into like, if you go to a business school, one thing they will tell you is like, you need a business plan when you're starting a business. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good and bad. Yeah. Um, the reason why I say um, it takes, when you have a business plan, you can, cre- you can download a template, any free template online. Um, 
all of those free templates will have the same topics. What is your business? How are you going to finance, finance it? Um, how are you going to market it? Like, mm-hmm. Right. So these are all topics that you will have to think about it. Now, do you have to completely write that business plan? Not necessarily. Um, if you need to get an actual investment, yes, you need to have a business plan and you mm-hmm. need to have a pitch. It's really good to have a business plan written so that when you are pitching to somebody, they know that you know what you're talking about. Like if I have a business plan and I'm pitching it to Ketty, if I know what I'm talking about, she has a question, I have the answers. It gives her confidence that I know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And if I don't have a business plan, I just come to her like, hey, I would like to start a sauna. And she has asked her, like, I don't know. I never thought of it. It doesn't give... <laughs> It doesn't give me a leg up. It doesn't give confidence. Exactly. So pros and cons on having a business plan. Now, if you know what it is and you just want to get at it, that's fine. You still would need to at least look at the informal business plan. Just think of the things. Like just think of your what your business is going to look like, who your audience is, who's your target is. You may not have to write it all down, but it's something you definitely need to think about. Um, how you're going to finance it and how you're going to market it. Mm-hmm. Because when it's time to do that, in your head, you already thought of it. You already was thinking about it. You were already creating a business to keep those back end or your end goal in mind. Um, because if you don't, you will miss a step or two. Um, again, you don't need to have a formal business plan, but you may need to download a template, at least look at the topics. Exactly. Um, think yeah. about it, thought about it, just research on it. It's good to know that information. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where the marketing comes in. Like, yeah, you may not be a great marketer, but you need to take pictures. Yes. You need to market. This Social media is free. Marketing is free nowadays. You don't mm-hmm. really need to do a lot of money in the promotions, but it's time and effort. Mm-hmm. That is expensive <laughs> as yes. well. But yes, time yes. and effort. So sure. all of this um, that you have to do, is it worth it? We're going to talk about the, the pros, pros and cons, cons. Um, uh, and then, you know, you can get to decide at the end of this podcast <laughs> if you really want to do this or maybe uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and both answers are okay. Yeah. So what, do you want to go on a, yeah. one con and one pro and just like, yeah. what is your biggest con so, that you have come across? Biggest con? Yeah, of owning um, a business. Of owning a normies, like having a normie. It is, first of all, it is our full time job. Um, this is our full time job for all the normies who work on here. We do have like Spidey's a part timer, Nikki's part time. They come here help us between their other full time job. Yeah, um, I would say for me personally, with within like you know my role in the company. Yeah, my biggest con is. Sometimes I feel like I'm not learning anything new mm. because uh, there was a huge like learning period and kind of like growing pains and all that, which in one in, in like one point of view, that was very hard. But in another point of view, it was I learned so much yeah. and I grew as yeah. a person and as a professional. And now that like everything's kind of like, you know, smooth out. Is it smooth out? It's not, but <laughs> it, it's de- it's definitely better. Yeah, you know, and like there's like less to keep an eye on the constantly mm-hmm. because sometimes th- things are just more like kind of automat- uh, automated. Automated, yeah. And sometimes it makes me feel like I'm not really learning anything mm-hmm. new, and for some reason I'm not even getting more time <laughs> learning this because there's always something I need to like pick Fair up. Enough. Um but uh what would it be that you want to learn something new if you had the opportunity or is it just more so um, taking regular classes or skills that you don't have time to do yeah yeah like i've tried to take a class on like project management because i essentially am a project manager now and i don't have any like formal background on it just my experience here Mm -hmm. and uh i know that definitely sometimes my processes are not the best and they can be clunky so i'm trying to like be more independent without really relying on you uh rely on me I, don't I mean, I know, <laughs> I know I can, and I do, but, you know, I also want to have that skill set Makes sense. In, up my sleeve, and so I've been trying to take this class, and I just, like, can't, because I don't have time, and it's frustrating, and I pay for this class every month, and I'm just so annoyed that, like, I don't have time for it, but yeah, um, I think also tied to that, my other con is just, like, if this, the, the anxiety of, like, if this doesn't last, which, you know, 
I mean, there's an expiration date for everything. But it's just like, how am I going to market myself as an employee? Mm-hmm. And I think that I just don't want to be an employee anymore after this. I yeah. just want to um, just be a business owner and just like figure something out af- mm-hmm. after this if it comes to it. Yeah. Um, and it's just kind of like, what is going to be? Like, just my future. I have anxiety about my future gotcha, because gotcha. of the nature of my job. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. No, that makes sense. Um, I think my biggest con, and I think we'll talk about like the pros and cons. Um, this is something that I did part time for a really long time until like beginning of this year or summer of this year when I became full time. I think one of my biggest fear or con was working with friends. <laughs> um, I love working with you guys and also hate it at the same time. Same. The reason why, <laughs> like, I am used to working in a consultant industry with people that who knows that that's their job and if i tell them something that needs to be done um that's their job right like it's something that they need to do it but here i've learned um the first few months when i became full-time i just kind of wanted to be observed like just an observation role because everybody has very weird management style and the leadership <laughs> style um like everybody is very different um it's not a typical environment because at the same time everybody is working for themselves but at the same time needs to be managed as well mm-hmm. um so it's a lot of um learning for me and i think one thing i've learned a lot from my previous job is just to like be quiet and just listen um that helped a lot and I don't think it's con to work with friends. Obviously, it helps when you know the people you're working with. Um, it's just being friends with somebody and then learning their work ethic is a very different thing. Um, the only reason why I say con is just because it takes a little bit longer to learn who you're working with and what works for them and how mm. to communicate with them. And mm-hmm. I think that would be one thing I will say. Like If you do start a business with friends... Um, Give them a benefit of doubt um, on learning how they work because how I work is not how everybody else works. And I know we have, um, what is it called? Like clashed horns, uh, like multiple times because like my management style is very strict and direct compared <laughs> to everybody else. So I've learned to like adapt and kind of learn how everybody else work and work around them. Mm-hmm. Um one thing somebody like taught me somebody told me when i took a leadership class um there's a technique called velvet hammer um like so if some let's say you're doing something wrong and i've told you what to do and you haven't so Mm -hmm. what i will do is like essentially like kitty here's what i'm saying um it doesn't look like so what how you think that we should improve this or Mm -hmm. how we should make it better um kind of like kind of helping them understand what i'm seeing and what i how it needs like then you coming up with the answer how it needs to be changed so it's kind of called velvet hammer and i've been using that a lot and that's been helpful in multiple ways um but it's still something that i personally feel like i have to walk on eggshells there's nothing wrong with it but it's just you know be mindful of where everybody's at because everybody's mind changes every day and mine does too and i always have to make sure that i'm sitting behind yeah compliment sandwich Absolutely, like sandwich. I have to do a compliment sandwich, but then yeah. you have to make sure the sandwich is still clear, that the compliment is not so much compliment that people mm-hmm. don't understand what was the meat in the sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> this is very hard for me because, like my, like my culture, mm-hmm. it's like very direct. Oh yeah, <laughs> and sometimes and culture is not. Yeah, yeah. The, sometimes they can definitely be perceived as like rude, or just you know insensitive and it's like not my intention at all to 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 be that or make somebody feel like they're not getting respect from me um i'm just like trying to like get to the point quickly yeah so that i know what to do next and And i'm just like you know and like my time i really value my time yeah and if something that could be an email turns into an hour-long meeting that makes me upset <laughs> oh yeah no for sure i think that's the one thing we we in a group therapy and the one thing we had to talk about in last therapy like i had to really hone it down it's like i value my time mm-hmm. so much like i overprotect my time so i'm with the same boat like if mm-hmm. i see that time being wasted i get really mad and <laughs> i've been really careful of how to express that madness just be like quiet <laughs> man and just be like all right i understand this like 
how do we make sure um, we we could yeah puppy's right like brown culture never talks about their feelings and we will fluff our feelings and we won't be direct like you 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 saying what this and you fluff it and you but you never say this and I think we've been getting better at it especially in the therapy helps with the communication um and that's just learning each other's culture I think like we all come in a different culture with different mm-hmm. backgrounds um everybody communicates differently so Mm -hmm. that's been one of the big things is just to learn to communicate because at other work you may be upset right like you might be upset that's fine i'm going home i may only come to you next time but here if i upset you i have to go work on another business with you (laughs) (laughs) and probably go on a vacation with you tomorrow as well so just making sure like hey I have to say what I have to say, but making sure it's as professional as it yeah. can be. And also, um, like, it stays here. It stays here. In this bubble. Yeah. And then outside of that bubble, we were still good. Yeah. We we're still friends. And that took seven years. <laughs> <laughs> took a long time to yeah, just be it, like... It's, it's really hard. Yeah. And it's hard to, you know, like, if you have to, like, deliver negative feedback... Mm-hmm. It's really hard when you have to do it to a, to somebody you care for. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not a pleasant experience for either party. No, no. Yeah. And the other things, like if you are working with your friends and if it's more than one person, right, you will need to build a feedback loop. Mm-hmm. Just make sure you're giving that feedback sooner than later. Um, don't wait till the evaluation, which we did, which oh was God. horrible. Um, I don't know why, because clearly we don't know how to communicate. So we'll, we'll do evaluation. And the shit came up in evaluation a year later. It was like, it could have been talked about six yeah, months I ago. I had no idea. Um, yeah. 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 So just like, yeah, if you're working, if it's not just you and you're working with more than one person, two mm-hmm. people, make sure you have every other week a monthly or quarterly feedback loop where you're just giving somebody feedback instantly if mm-hmm. not like yeah it should yeah. be instantly like if something you didn't like somebody did like just let them know mm-hmm. um before it festers on um yeah. because we let things fester a very long time <laughs> so Horribly. here are some more um things that you may encounter if you own a business yeah. let's talk about if they're pros or cons yeah so one of them not having a boss um i love it i think that's definitely a pro um Mm -hmm. not having a boss now again it's also a con because when shit hits the fan you have to deal with it Mm -hmm. there's nobody that i can be like it's not my problem i don't get paid enough for that i'm going home and (laughs) clocking out no it is your problem even if you don't get paid enough for it you are the one um who have to deal with it so it's pros and con is it more of a pro um, I would say so. Yeah. Definitely for me, it's it's a con because I love the flexibility. Yeah. And I, I, I it's just... It's definitely more of a pro. pro. For me. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I meant pro. Yeah. yeah. I love the flexibility and I just love the... Like, it gives me more freedom. It also gives me more power. Because mm-hmm. when you don't have your own boss, you don't have to depend on their decision. Yeah. You're the one who makes the decision. Exactly. Um, And I'm not trying to be drunk on that power, but... I love it because like I do want to make changes sometimes that I think are, you know, more aligned with all of our values that we all agree on. And I'm just trying to like keep us on that track. And uh, it just, yeah, it makes me feel like if we are like straying away or if we're doing something we shouldn't be doing, then I can like voice it and my voice will be heard. No, makes sense. I like, um, um, what is this? Smoke Squad Lucifer. Smoke Squad Lucifer. <laughs> Smoke Squad Lucifer. Have a double vodka shot together before giving you negative oh feedback. Oh my God. I think we should do that. Like, we Jesus. have, like, if it's a good feedback, it's water. And if you drink it as vodka, just beware. That's a negative <laughs> feedback. Just prep for oh, it. Oh no. I think that's no. one way to give a hint. Like, it's either water or, or vodka that and go so from funny. there. Learning something new. Will we implement it? Who knows? We'll, see. we'll figure it out. Uh, learning and growing in different fields. Um, I think you kind of mentioned it. Like, um, I, this is something that I learned from my previous job. Is if I need to learn a skill, it's really something that I need to do outside of my forty-hour job. Mm-hmm. Um, like when I took my certification for project management, I had to like do all that learning. It was outside of my forty hours. Like, I will put my 50-hour, 40-hour week, and then I will go home and study because I just, like, I need... I put my deadline for myself 
six months. I need to do it in six months. Did I do it in six months? No, I did it in eight months, but I did it. Um, <laughs> like, I took a test after Christmas holidays and I passed. I was like, fuck it. Yay. Um, but learning, um, yeah, you may learn a lot because you own a business and you may not never have owned a business before that you didn't know about. Mm-hmm. And it can be very overwhelming, but just know that there's so many resources out there. Mm-hmm. I think it's pro. I love learning. Um, I always love challenges. When it's not challenged, I am bored. Same. I hate it. Yeah. Um, I want to be challenged and I want to... I want to be overwhelmed. I know I hate it, but I like being under pressure and overwhelmed. That works for me, mm-hmm. per se. It doesn't work for everybody else, but I know yeah. I work great when I have a lot to do. Yeah. <laughs> I think I am kind of like you, but yeah. I have I definitely have expiration that's way sooner before you. Makes sense. You're yeah. just like going in and I'm just like, oh, I can take out. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I I'll take a going. break. Yeah. No, if I take a break, I don't know what to do with myself. Oh. It's like I don't I don't Oh no. I, I just go in the nature. Be in the nature. Oh yeah. It's the best. Oh, that's why I have Nico. It's like yeah. let, let's go on a walk because that's why I am doing a job still, right? Like <laughs> it for me it's mindset of like, oh my god, I have to do this kind of thing, which is fine. It makes me do it, but I love doing it. That's the only way. Uh, you just have to build something on it. Yeah. Um, doing taxes <laughs> yay doing taxes it's so fun I hate it um i love financials but i hate doing taxes um mm-hmm. and i think one thing i've learned is again track things from day one because yeah. if you don't you're gonna hate your life you hate your life i'm trying to like finish up our books um this month and i'm almost done i'm like 95 percent done now i'm going back and doing quality check on it mm-hmm. just because the way I started categorizing, categorizing some things at the beginning of the year changed in the end of the year, and I want to make sure those are kind of cleaned up. Um, I, I remember, like, the first time we filed taxes, um, Suraj did it, and the year later, I had so many questions, and he wasn't sure. I was like, I'm taking it over. <laughs> like, let me do this. Um, find somebody who is good with numbers. If you are not good with numbers and you're not comfortable with it, don't deal with it unless you are comfortable with it you will learn a lot um i have a master in business they will teach you accounting on a high level uh, but it's not something you will know until you're doing it. it it's a lot more work it's a lot more intuitive a lot more things that you will learn along the way if that's something you want to learn go for it if not hire somebody there is a lot of bookkeepers out there for really cheap who will do it for you mm-hmm. um but i cannot stress enough to track your financials yeah Track it. And then you know what? Even if you don't track your meals and stuff, just put it in there. Like every month you had two meals for $15 each. Put it in there. Mm-hmm. Um, start tracking from beginning instead of in the end. Like I need to put in rent. Like no. Put it in now. Like You should already be done in November. <laughs> December should be just clean up month. Having or not having health care? I don't know. What do you think about that? Um, well, health care sucks anyway. Yeah, yeah. I don't see a difference personally. Uh, if we lived in a different country, like if I, you know, if I lived uh, in Czech Republic, I would probably be more nervous about not having my healthcare. It's definitely more expensive if you are um, a freelancer or mm-hmm. a business owner. Um, it's definitely so much more expensive to get healthcare compared to if you are an employee. Yeah. Um, then like, you know, most things are just covered with, you know, your contributions, monthly contributions to a healthcare plan and your taxes. So, you know, yeah. you don't get like a surprise bill, but that happens to me. We have healthcare now um, through the normies and I still get surprise bills all the time. And I feel like it really doesn't make a difference for me whether I pay multiple hundreds of dollars every month and then still get a thousand dollar bill for something very simple. I don't understand American healthcare. I hate it. Yeah. I don't think it really matters whether or not you have healthcare. I think healthcare in America is in general a con. <laughs> it's a con. Yeah. And smoke squad <laughs> Lucifer, I'm jealous that you have a free healthcare. I wish we had a free healthcare. It's not something that we think about it. As a company, we are offering healthcare now um, mm-hmm. just because 80% of the staff is us. So it was kind of a way to start it like, hey, that's 
it's benefit for us obviously we have more employees now so it's i, I think 50 percent of us partners and the other ones are everybody else yeah. um the price has gone up uh something we'll like to continue offering but let's say things go bad like with financial wise um that might be the first benefit first few benefits that we may think of getting rid of um uh, and thankfully there is a healthcare available through a marketplace if it wasn't that would be a more difficult choice yeah. um but it's something that we do consistently talk about and again um it's not required for small companies to offer it anymore um you don't have to offer it right away it's a benefit that mm -hmm. you should offer when you have the ability to do so because you will get incentive from that as well yeah um, but also you want to make sure that your employees are happy mm -hmm. especially if you have to uh spend some investment financial or time wise on training them no. you want to make sure that that time you invested is you know you get rewarded by these people sticking around because they love working there because they get benefits mm -hmm. you know there's so many things you can do to motivate people to stick around yeah. employee retention yeah absolutely that is one of the things um as employee retention because it was easier for us to not easier um just one way to give a benefit to employees except just raises uh because health benefit is a benefit and giving other benefits as well the way we started we didn't have a health benefit but we had like stipend that we started off in the beginning that people could have used either on their health premiums or on their gyms because we wanted to make sure that us who are sitting all the time to watch a tv is actually going out and being healthy and that mm -hmm. was a one way for incentivize like hey go have a gym membership did everybody participate no but it's something that like there's a benefit for people to say like why do we want to stay because we are getting these one of these benefits mm -hmm. um so small and big it does help um we try to give benefits like we have um meals monday wednesday and friday um something that we started recently but again it's just one like if you're at a studio um and you're working sometimes you're working more than eight hours um you you get your meal so that helps knowing that like hey i might be here for 10 hours or eight hours or who knows how long at least mm -hmm. i won't go hungry um not that everybody's going hungry you can go get your meal but it's, <laughs> it's good to know when the company is yeah. paying for it um because it's another benefit you know mm -hmm. that comes to you yeah. um but <laughs> it, it, it's just it, it's kind of a helpful when you know, when we see our editors or everyone working nonstop because sometimes something drops, like we're working on Sunday um, and working on a Christmas. We're not work, trying to work on Christmas break, but there's finales happening on Christmas break. Um, so we want to make sure we're kind of incentivizing our employees to like, hey, these are things that we are offering throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, you can work from home. We we'll would love to work from home, but people who cannot work from home, incentivizing for them to drive up all the way to a studio. This is one of the incentives. Mm -hmm. um, just employee retention. It's just helpful. Oh my God. Pavi says I have to pay for parking and for the cafeteria at my oh hospital. Oh my God, That's man. That's insane. That's horrible. Parking you shouldn't be paying for. At all. Like, par like I get the food, but parking, not that's parking. wild. You're a doctor. Pavi, <laughs> you are commodity. <laughs> like, you are commodity. You need to like, negotiate oh these things God. in your next contract get parking paid that is wild that's insane i would hate it if i have to pay for park. i hate park i hate paying for parking or shipping and handling i hate paying for them i hate it i will go out of my way to park somewhere free like unless i'm really running running late <laughs> then i hate it but yeah um okay there's more things uh risk is big big, big. it is a risky it's always gonna be a con yes. um everything every time you are gonna start your business it is gonna be a risky thing mm -hmm. um just know that what you are working hard for like believe in your idea believe in your concept like if you believe in it you can work hard in it and put time and effort um then that risk probability gets lowered if you believe in it if you don't then yeah yeah this is 100 percent. yeah and but also with the risk you have tie in Pro, which mm -hmm. is potential for growth like when you're building your business you're building your equity you you know eventually probably hopefully uh will spend less and less time on working on mm -hmm. your business because you will have resources to 
get other people to work on the business for you you'll be able to support them mm -hmm. with salary mm -hmm. and also you know you will just hopefully eventually you know the goal of owning a business in my humble opinion is I want to work less and less <laughs> so far it hasn't happened for me but <laughs> I hope that one day uh, I'll one get day. there <laughs> but I think that going there like that is a good goal but everybody should be mindful like in the beginning you'll be working way more than mm -hmm. just having a job somewhere yes um so that's something that you need to just mindset of like if I'm owning a business I won't be working just regular 40 hours it won't be eight to five 40 hours it might be 60 hours 24 7 like it, it is a lot of effort but the goal is that you believe in your vision and that vision will come true. And then now we have like nine to five. Um, but obviously that was not the case. Like we, everybody worked extra after work, like Serge and Vicky and like Chris like pulled all nighters editing because we didn't have editors. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of effort and time goes into it, knowing everybody believed in the vision. Um, and that's where it comes down to. And yeah. I, I think I will say with like risk, um don't stress like if you're stressing too much about your risk sit down and write them mm -hmm. write down what the risk is and write down what the probability of the risk occurring is and what will be the impact um i used to do risk management for a living before normies and i still do it sometimes here and there um make sure you write down your risk what they are how what the probability is, is low high and medium and what the impact is if mm -hmm impact and probably is high have a plan to how to mitigate it um and then once you write it down then don't stress about it you have it right now you have a plan on it you mm -hmm. will put the plan in effort there's no reason to stress about it you're gonna have health like concerns with stress stress is a definitely deadly thing don't stress about too much mm -hmm. which is hard to say i stress all the time yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um it's it's hard to manage stress but there are definitely strategies to help you yeah. Um, I did want to go back to some of the comments. The great Smoke, questions. Smoke Squad Lucifer says, uh, regarding the having your boss or not, uh, it's a big con for a female. You never know what type of male boss you're going to have. Definitely agree. Mm -hmm. I think whether the boss is male or female, they can make your life a living hell. Um, did you ever had like a really bad boss uh, that make things awkward? I had a bad boss in the past there was a one boss that i had um she was a female she was a ceo and um she would just make weird comments because like she was a big lady and mm -hmm. nothing against it but like the place was always cold and i will have a heater like it would be summer and i will have a heater oh and then one time i had a heater on i was working reception and um she said that was like a fire hazard like i understand but like it's cold and she made a comment like well if you eat more you wouldn't be cold and she was a what CEO and I just looked at her and I was like, um, I don't know what to do with this comment. <laughs> like I didn't say anything. <laughs> and obviously I didn't, well, that was a temporary job. I didn't work for there too long, but it was just one of the things like she's a CEO. That's How can you go about it? So there will be comments made here and there. And it's just a matter of what position you are in. Um, I would have gone to HR if I was going to stay there longer. If I saw building my career there mm -hmm. but i knew that was just a stepping stone or just something that was doing temporarily in between before i went to school so i didn't care for it um but yeah i've had bad bosses and i've had great bosses like my past like my previous one my project manager i loved her loved her to death i learned so much from her and she was also like straightforward like me and i knew a lot of people weren't big fan of her because she came in and she asked questions she asked questions that were meant to be asked and people didn't know the answer, so people were not happy with it. But, like, I loved her because, like, I would have never thought of asking this question mm -hmm. or just, like, you know, stopping in conversation, asking simple questions that people didn't have the answer for, but they would need to be answered. Um, absolutely love her. And I still talk to her. I still, like, will, like, call her up if I have a question. Um, she's great. Um, so, yeah, there's all kind of bosses. What about you? Yeah. You have a bad boss? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I feel like it's unfortunate that when you are a student or like when you're young, mm -hmm. it's very easy to be taken advantage of. Yeah, that's I'm true. I personally fully disagree with free internships. I think that's just bullshit. <laughs> I, everybody should be compensated for their time. And like sometimes, sometimes like you just get internship where you're just 
sitting at the reception, for example, and you don't yeah. learn shit. Yeah. And then you just get like a credit in in school, but like you still have to pay for the class. And you didn't and learn anything. Like, yeah. And it, I hate it. Mm. I, I, that's to me, that's slavery. It's free labor. It's slavery. We have moved past it. Yep. We shouldn't be doing it anymore. We didn't move past it. But though. we always find ways to get back to it for some reason. Yeah. And, and it's disturbing. Are the worst. Yes. Um, so I mean, but unfortunately, I had to go through a few of those, and I definitely didn't have a good time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, after you were kind of like past that, and I, you know, became like an adult, and I was actually looking for a full time job. It wasn't so bad anymore. Yeah. I feel like with age, people get more respect. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, which I also find weird because yeah. I feel like I deserved respect when I was a child <laughs> <laughs> no, or young sense. adult. Um, yeah, Kenny just needs to move closer sorry. to the mic. I was trying to be comfy. No, you good. Um, <laughs> I think the going back to your question, Smoke Squad, Lucy, for um, it, having a male boss, I don't. For me, I think I kind of always assume that I will get a boss who's male, right? That's kind of just seeing a female boss, it's good, Mm -hmm. but you don't see it that often. So in your head, always like, I'm going to get a male boss. And I never kind of freaked out or anything was like, oh my God, what kind of boss it would be. I just assume that people are doing their job and that would be a mindset that I would go with. It's like, you are doing your job unless you tell me you a sleazebag. Like, unless you make an effort or something that tells me otherwise, I'm going to assume that you're here to do your job, you're a boss, and you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I never thought that was as a con for me to have a boss who was a male um, because I was going in to do a job and I was going to be as professional as possible. And then obviously my situation might be a little bit different. It might not be everybody else because sometimes people stuck. Like you can't really go anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I've been fortunate enough not to have a horrible bosses. Um, and then if I did, then just knowing that's a temporary stepping stone and just kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, no, I never thought of it as like, oh, I don't know what kind of male boss I'm going to get. I'm mm-hmm. sure that's a concern for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad that that's where we are yeah. in society. Yeah. That's- um, high ve- Vega, Vega, high Vega. Um, there has to be hierarchy in an organization though, right? Everyone can't be a boss. True. Yes. It's seven of us, um, boss, <laughs> like, but there needs to be hierarchy, um, for sure. And I think the way we build our hierarchy, um, Surge is the CEO and founder. And I think we can kind of go as an like Surge and the kind of pyramid, but at the same time, it is a vertical and we all have our areas that we take control of yes um, i think that we just kind of um in like uh unofficially respect each other's mm-hmm. spe- specialties yeah or uh, ex- like the experience in the field that we have in specific areas so like you know if if we need to figure out like make a decision on like a, a big equipment purchase then i won't say anything because i don't know mm-hmm. but if we have to make decisions regarding like Patreon, Patreon, Scheduling. what we should watch next and stuff. Then I will definitely have many opinions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think that's a good point. Yeah. Like we respect people who are on, like, like not everybody. No one person can manage everything. Mm-hmm. So we have people managing different aspects, and we respect that that person know what they're talking about. Now there have been instances where we have argued about on a topic, and I've always like I will look at sources like that. Hey, Make a make a decision, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it comes down to it. Like you will need that one person who can be a tiebreaker, or just it might not be a good, happy decision that everybody agree with. But understanding that we respect the decision, whatever this person makes. So like there has been instances where we kind of like gone back and forth, and we just like search make a decision, and then if he can, then we'll vote. We have a democracy, so we'll vote on it, and the majority vote win, mm-hmm. and then we kind of just have to, like, hey, if I don't win in that vote, that's fine. Whatever decision the group has made is a decision I will abide by, and I will go from there. Mm-hmm. That has been a lot of work for us to do as well, but I think a voting system has saved us a lot of time yeah. and stress yeah. and a lot of arguments. So, yeah, have a democracy. That helps. Mm-hmm. That helps. Um, there was what- another question. Yeah. Um, have you oh no that was answered uh, maybe not no, okay. go for it 
Um, there's a few more, uh, like people management, for example. Do you think, is that a con for you or is it a pro? People management? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if a pro and con is the right word to say. Um, I don't mind people managing uh, just because I've had examples or mm. mentors who I have learned from how to manage people. Um, so I have learned how to do it. Um, so I think it's pro for me. If mm. I didn't, it can be like, again, like I said, the con is working with friends. So people that you're managing are your friends. <laughs> so you kind of have to learn how yeah. they like to be managed. Um, which has taken some time for mm -hmm. it. Um, I do understand that people need to be self-sustained, yeah. but that will never be possible. I, I know we argue on this many times and we don't agree on this. <laughs> not everybody can be a leader. Not everybody can manage themselves. Yeah. Would be great if the whole world can manage themselves. That's not the case. So I don't mind managing a team. For me, that's a con. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys haven't guessed, but yeah, I just, I, I think that my expectations are always very high. Like if we have a new, uh, new hiree, mm -hmm. then I really go out of my way to train them and to give them all the resources that they need and like be available if they have questions and be very like, you know, friendly, but kind of like to the point, like these are the things. You have to do this like these are weekly the responsibilities monthly daily these are things that you are to be doing uh without reminders please you know like yeah, you know yeah. um and i just rely once you know we hire this person i kind of wants to rely mm -hmm. that this job is getting done yeah and uh it's like it's always very um and i try to not to take it personally mm -hmm. because i feel like that that's like one of the mistakes i've been doing is like do you hate me? <laughs> He's like, why are you doing this to me? But sometimes people just forget. Um, yeah. And uh, that's human. And I just need to, you know, kind of like get over the fact that it's not about me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely still like a learning curve. It's still like something I'm learning. Yeah. To just uh, be more like, you know, when you were like Velvet Hammer or what you say? Yeah, Velvet yeah, Hammer. Like, yeah, like just be that instead of a fucking saw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think one thing I've learned, like, I would love everybody to be self-sustained. Like, and I, I would, again, like you, like, you will set up somebody for success. You mm -hmm. will give them all the resources that they need. Um, I didn't think, for me, it's like, I will give them all the resources that they need so that I don't have to micromanage them. Yeah. However, I will... I hate micromanaging. I, yeah, I hate micromanaging. I hate being micromanaged. I hate micromanaging. Um, I work better when I'm left alone and to do what I need to do with all the resources available. However, I will do those check-ins. I will make sure I have weekly or bi-weekly or monthly check-ins with people. And it might not be in person, but just check-in, like just to see like what, how their work has been. Um, because that is still people managing and just not a direct people managing. I don't have mm -hmm. to be in your face to manage you. I can just see your work output output and can be like, oh, you're doing great. And then we'll send them a note like, hey, your work's been amazing. Mm -hmm. um, or it's like, hey, if I, I just noticed this, just a heads up or just like, you know, just something to keep in mind for future. Um, or like, hey, like if you do that a couple of times, like then you kind of sit down and talk to them like, hey, I've been noticing this. Is this something that you need a support for? My way of coming to like, is there support that I can provide you in any of this? That is how I approach it too. Yeah. But in the back of my, and it's just like more like internal struggle for me. Yeah. Because I never like come over like, why the fuck is this? Not? <laughs> never. But in my head, sometimes I think that. You know what uh, I mean? Like for, yeah. I, I let the frustrate, I let it frustrate me. Yeah. Inwardly. Makes sense. And I just I need to not do that. Oh, I do too. Like sometimes, like if something's not getting done, I get so annoyed, and I will take a walk. But like. Yes, and I will rant to other people. Like I will rant to whoever. Like this person it. sucks, and then it. I will come to like, how can I support you? <laughs> <laughs> like, how can I make sure? Like, can I help you with something? Like, is something happening? Um, and I think that's a big on managing people scales. Like, you need to be aware of when somebody's being overwhelmed and i'm horrible at it like i've learned like few people in my team who were overwhelmed and i didn't see it because you're um, never overwhelmed uh, true 
it, like I am. I'm like secretly overwhelmed, but it will never show. Um, but I think that's like something to learn. Also, like somebody's overwhelmed and kind of pick it up on that and mm. just be like, hey, how can I support you? Is there something I can do for you? Is there something mm-hmm. I can like take it away? Um, and because not everybody. I'm horrible with telling people when I'm overwhelmed and so is everybody else. Yeah. So I kind of like, if I'm not good at it, people are not good at it either. Yeah. Um, but I don't mind managing people just because I do like things to be done in a specific way. Um, I will give people freedom to do it their, that way if it's not done that way. Like I will give everybody, take initiative. Mm-hmm. Here what needs to be done create your own air table, create your own Google sheet, whatever method you need to create to track it. If it doesn't work, then I'm like, okay, here's the tools. Here's this template that I've created. Use this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, Eli says something like he has a boss now who's younger than him and can, she can oftentimes be immature or childish. Um, having a boss who's younger than you um, is interesting because I don't, I don't think I've ever had a boss who's younger than me who's been childish and immature. Um, I'm assuming that somebody who's put a boss for me, like they know what they're doing. I have been that person who's younger. I've been in a room many times where mm-hmm. I was the youngest person and people didn't really take note of me. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been a few times like in my past job, like I was, I was like, control manager like project control manager and i was like the youngest person on the table and i had to tell somebody like this is the risk we are going sideways the schedule is off like there's a big risk and how can you tell that to a group who doesn't like respect you yeah. um but i had a great team who supported me who was able to stand up with me and that helped a lot mm-hmm. um and i think a good team is goes such a long way True. such a long way yeah. you can make your job or you can hate your job and i think that like the worst kind of boss is one that got there through nepotism yes like if God. if you know like you're work for a company and like you know the former boss is retiring and like their child or somebody related or their friend is like you know just posting off of that connection mm-hmm. They're usually the worst bosses to have. They are because they don't know shit. Because they didn't earn it. Yeah. They just kind of schmoozed into that position or they were born with that, you know, that inheritance. Yeah. And then it's always bad. It is bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, Puppy asked a really good question. So you guys have partners and associates and to make partnership, did you guys buy into a business? Um, again, our model is a little bit different. Um, it is seven of us. We are partners. Um, that means we own the percentage in the company mm-hmm. um we didn't buy into it we with the money what we did buy into it with the time that we spent mm-hmm. um so because i think we built our percentage of partnership like three years into the company mm-hmm. or four years yeah. so by that time we were all volunteering right like we were volunteering our time or whatever money that we we ourselves putting in um and i think so was the only time who had become full-time with like nothing um yeah. And so when we decided, like, all right, like, it is turning into something, we had a difficult conversation. Let's sit down. What does this look like? Is this a company now? And that's when I think we decided to make it a company because we realized, like, oh, people are actually watching us. There are subscribers. <laughs> there is money coming in. Now what do we do with this money? Um, yeah. And that's when we sat down, like, really had a difficult conversation on not How much are you worth? How much are you worth? <laughs> Essentially, like, how much are you worth? Because... Oh, so we're just saying, yo, oh, great, he will have a so bigger portion, but like, how does everybody else? And surprisingly, <laughs> that conversation went very, it went better than expected. <laughs> it could have gone horribly, <laughs> and I think we were all on the edge of it's having this conversation. Yeah. Um, because when it comes down to money, um, a it's percentage hard. in a company, it's a difficult conversation, but it's better to have that conversation sooner than later. And then that's when we kind of had a conversation on like who is exactly how much worth and then put it down on a paper. Yeah. Um, and then we wrote it down operating agreement and we had a lawyer check it out. Um, obviously, we made it more difficult than it needed to be. You can make it simple. These people. And we kind of had to talk about like, all right, um, if we do bring in a partner, what does that look like? If we do bring in a partner, yes, they will have to buy into a business. What does that look like? I don't know. We'll have to see. Never done it. Never done it. Um, what does it look like if we have to vote out somebody? 
um, what they will look like if we have to dissolve the company. So these are kind of questions that we kind of had to agree on and decide. <laughs> and I think what we end up deciding is like, you know, majority vote. Yeah. Um, but kicking somebody out or bringing somebody in, it has to be unanimous vote. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are a couple of things that we added, like, because that's a big deal that impacts yeah. everybody's percentage, that impacts money. Um, wh- whereas just making other decisions, like majority vote can work. But mm-hmm. these are difficult questions. If you are working with more than one or two, like more than yourself, question that you do need to answer, like make sure you do it because you don't want to go three or four years later, you're working with somebody and that person will also want to do 50% of the company. Whereas you think you have spent way more time because your name is on the company. You started it. Mm-hmm. Um, you never had that difficult question. So it makes sense. The other person wants 50%. So have that conversation sooner than later. Um, that also kind of sets expectation, exactly. like how exactly. much time yeah. everybody do need to put it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does that look like? Um, cool. Uh, we are like running out of time super <laughs> fast. We could talk about this for days. Days. I love talking um, about this. I did write some like final advice ideas. Yeah. Um, my one idea, if you are setting up your own business, outsource as soon as you can. Because whatever you're doing, you you have to do so many, like we mentioned, marketing, financing, uh, tracking your financials, all that is outside of what you actually want to do, which is, Mm -hmm. I don't know, baking bread or, you know, making TikTok videos. I don't know. Whatever you want to do is completely different thing from what you actually have to do, which is like all this extra stuff. Mm -hmm. Outsource that as soon as you can, so you can keep focusing on the growth with you know putting your time where you work best Mm -hmm. not everybody can do financial tracking i can't do it i do it for myself and i hate it Mm -hmm. i can't imagine doing it for a company so like know your strengths and weaknesses outsource as soon as you can yes um remember why you started and stay true to your values and what's important to you if you have to make compromises that's fine but just always go back and consult with your own values Mm -hmm. make sure they're aligned Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and sure. we mentioned compartmentalizing your relationship with, you know, business friends. If that's the situation you're in, make sure that there's this business bubble within which you are business partners mm-hmm. and outside of that bubble, like kick that bubble off when you go for coffee or something Yeah, and uh, just don't even talk about it. And make the other thing going along with it, make sure you don't consider hanging out with that friend in a business as a hanging out. No, no, you're working. I think that's the one thing we <laughs> fucked up on was like, oh, I see you all the time. No, you're working. Yes. So you need to make sure you're having a drink with that person or like a meal outside of work as mm-hmm. a friend, right? Yeah. Like you are compartmentalizing like we're working, but then you're not hanging out with them. That, that person is just a work friend. Yeah. Like that person is just colleague. Yeah. Like they're not friends outside of it. So you do need to make sure you do compartmentalize and set time aside to do friends things and do work things. Yes. Um. But yeah, it's, it's a it's a lot of a lot of things, a lot of lessons learned. Um, but um, yeah, did you talk to Spencer to come down here? I did not. Okay. Uh, but I think he is there because I saw him in the chat. Oh, sweet. with that, we are going to have to say goodbye. But we are going to be talking more about this stuff. As you can see, we can literally talk about it for days. Um, the next topic for this mini series is going to be the pros and cons of working with friends. Ah, so i guess we're gonna talk more about that um we may also talk about the business stages of growth and like the growing pains we encountered um so yeah we hope that all of it will be useful to you guys yeah um and And now to the raid just heads up we are off thursday friday so there was no one piece read along tomorrow i'm sorry i know i'm sad about it too we are both sad we were looking forward (laughs) to a one piece Along with that, we won't have a talking normies on Friday either. So happy Thanksgiving and we'll see you next week. Bye. Get ready. Because it's about time for you to speak your mind.